calling this video zero in this series of videos about using iBooks Author to make resources for music education. And the reason for that is because really the things in this video are probably things that anyone could work out themselves by just opening up iBooks Author and having a go with it. So what I'm talking about here really are the four basic elements that you would very easily put into iBooks Author without needing to really understand how the program works at all. So the first is as simple as text. So you can see that any text on the screen can be highlighted. Uh, you can rewrite over the top of it and go into one of these ready-made pages. This is some text. And, I, and I'm going to work on the presumption that you don't need to be taught how to type and how to think of ideas, that you can manage that for yourself. Um, so that's the first element. The next element that I want to talk about putting in is um, images. So I'm just going to drag an image that I've already downloaded to my desktop and I'm going to put it there into my book. You can see it's a nice picture of a guitar. Now just one note um, about images. Uh, when you put images into your books, you should make sure that either you own them yourself, so they might be musical excerpts that you've made yourself, they might be images of instruments, players, um, things like that. Or if you're going to locate things on the internet, then uh, I suggest doing a copyright commons search uh, or uh, going to Google and, and under the image search, go to the advanced image search and choose uh, free to use or share or free to use, share or modify. And then when you do your search, you'll come up with something that you can use perfectly legally. Um, and um, don't forget to either include uh, the source that where you, from where you got that image, um, either on the same page or you can put a credits page at the back just showing where you got the different images from. Uh, images can be edited so if they uh, don't seem to fit the frame that you put them into, so for instance if I put this here on this front page you can see it doesn't make sense. If I try dragging it around all sorts of weird things are going to happen but if you click edit mask that will actually allow you to either move the image within the uh, mask or to um, by pressing it the right number of times you should be able to there we go, get hold of the outside of the image and then you can actually resize it, which in this place, in this case, looks pretty terrible, but you can imagine how that might be uh, useful. You can, of course, do other tricks like turn it around. I'm just holding command while dragging the corner there. So that's images. Uh, the other two ingredients that, uh, that I would mention would be video and audio, and they're extremely easy to use. So I'm just going to uh, again look on my desktop. I've got a video interview that I made here with a singer-songwriter for a resource that I'm working on at the moment. I'm just going to drag that in and you can see in this particular style of book you get this rather strange looking um, uh, piece of ripped paper but uh, they don't all work like that. Again you can title it interview oops, with Alicia Keen and uh, you can preview these things uh, within the app but you're always best to actually connect uh, an iPad, open iBooks on the iPad and then click this preview button up here but it will play directly on the screen. Okay. So I started with the E and the A sounds good which I'd already learnt and added this one in for colour just because I found it and liked the sound of it. And that goes for the whole first verse. It's like you've been sitting out in the rain for too long. You're all soggy and blurred and you say all your day. So you can see here I've just brought up the inspector, uh, which you open and close with this little button here. And the inspector, if you click on the uh, widgets button, uh, even though we're just dragging these in from the desktop, they are actually widgets and we're going to learn more about widgets in later videos. Um, but uh, if you click on the widgets button, then you'll get a bunch of settings for that. So for instance, uh, this poster frame is exactly which bit of the video I want to be the, uh, the bit that people see when they play. So I don't want to get Alicia looking in a, in a strange position. I want her to be looking like she's rocking out there. A few other options, including to make um, playback work full screen only, which means as soon as it's tapped, it's going to take over the whole iPad and under layout as well you can do things like remove some of the uh, different things from there including that strange background. So that's the inspector. Uh, now I'm going to drag an mp3 in, that's the last kind of um, 
resource that I'm going to put in there and just show you this one's important again to look at the inspector again under widgets because uh, there are three different ways you can get audio to work and they're usable in three different ways in music education. So first is just this nice little button. You can see it's really really neat again you could get rid of this text or whatever and just have that button on its own or um, uh, listen to the song or you can have a little title. Um, you can also then again under the um, inspector click on scrubber bar which gives you one of these and this is resizable by the way so if you want it to go I find it's quite useful if you want a student to uh, be able to go through the recording and maybe consider you've got a score excerpt or something in here or some questions then you've by making it wider it's easy for them to go to an exact part of the recording so go and wait to a different song Color okay, and um, last but not least, there's another way that you can make uh, it work. If I just change again over in the inspector to image, what that does is it gives you, instead of having a button or a slider, this image is going to act as, um, as a button to play the song, if you like. So if I drag that onto here, and again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, under layout, tell it that I don't want to have the title, I don't want to have the background. So now I've just got this image and that image is effectively my button. You can see under interaction that if I, I can still play. Mm. Now that might not seem um, very intuitive when you look at it like that, but let's imagine that instead of having an image of a guitar, I had an image of a chord um, diagram. So what I could do is I could have a chord diagram here. Maybe I've made that in a notation program like Sibelius. I've exported it out as an image and I've dragged it into here. Then I've dragged a recording of that chord on. So by tapping on that chord, I can hear what that chord's going to sound like. So those are the kind of things that you can do with a combination of images and um, recordings in, um, in iBooks Author. So uh, the last thing uh, that I want to do just in this video is just um, review the four different uh, uh, bits of content that I've covered. So firstly, text um, that you can simply type into your document. Uh, the next thing that I imp uh, imported was an image just by dragging it and dropping it onto the iBook and I mentioned uh, making sure that you don't use copyright images. Uh, I dragged in a video that I had made and that was very easy to set up and then finally audio which had three different um, layouts that all work in slightly different ways. So those are the four main elements um, of things that you'll use in your iBooks and the remaining videos will look at just other little um, very little tricks that are really good for making iBooks for music education. So go and wait to a different